It is midweek action across the top five leagues in Europe. I mean, we're in football heaven. We had games in the, over the weekend. And as well, now we're having games across the week. So, hey, are you guys as excited as I am? Because, I mean, we never get tired of watching football now. Do we? My name is Omola Bakaradi, and I bid you a warm welcome to Football Analysis on your favorite streaming channel, CTV, where we talk to you about all things going on in the world of football. So if it's happening in the world of football, be rest assured, we're most definitely going to be talking about it. I hope you're very well. I hope you're staying safe. COVID is here, unfortunately. Still be, it's, it is still here. It has mutated now that we're telling you we're having COVID, Omicron. Guys, go and get vaccinated, all right? Make sure you mask up. Ensure that you wash your hands properly. I know it's, it's tiring. I'm tired as well. But hey, let's make sure we prioritize our health and our safety. We are very particular about your health. I mean, you can't enjoy football except you're safe, except you're uh, ill, except you're hurting. So ensure that uh, you stay safe, safety first at all times. If you're driving, ensure that you are responsible. Make sure you wear your seatbelt. Passengers as well. Make sure you wear your seatbelt. Uh, for drivers, don't use your phone while you're on the road. You can park your car to make that call, to send that text message if it is as important as you think it is, all right? Uh, life first, safety first at all times. Let's be responsible, okay? Let's make sure we obey traffic rules and regulation. For pedestrians, uh, pedestrians as well, we also have our own responsibilities on the road. So make sure that you use the footbridges in areas where they are available. If there are no footbridges, then, only then, should you cross the road, make sure you look left, right, and le and then left again. Let's try our best all right, not to use our earphones with so much uh, loud volume when we're walking around so we can pay attention to what's going on around us, okay? Safety first at all times. So we meet today on the show to analyze, to talk about everything going on in the world of football. I've got with me uh, the capable, the amiable, the knowledgeable, the list is long. How many adjectives do I want to use? I've got with me Yusuf Odukoya, a.k.a. Tycoon. Welcome to the show, Tycoon. Well, I'm on the show. Uh, uh, my name is Yusuf Odukoya, a.k.a. Tycoon. I'm um, a supporter of Liverpool, you know, since 2005. I'm going to be a point in today's episode of the show. All right, then, and we already heard from the man himself, so let's get right into it now, shall we? Before we get into the games, though, people are still buzzing about the Ballon d'Or Awards, uh, the winners... Uh, everything that happened basically. Okay, just in case you did not know, or maybe you're on Planet Rock or wherever it is you are, I think you should know by now that Lionel Messi was the recipient of his seventh Ballon d'Or award. Uh, so, Tycoon, were you surprised that uh, the award went to Lionel Messi as a lot of people thought? Well, maybe it should have gone to Lewandowski or not? Uh, to, to be sincere, I would be surprised if um, Lewandowski actually uh, emerged the winner of the Ballon d'Or, but you know, um, it is very important for us to, you know, uh, admit that it has always been, you know, a competition that has always been alternated between Ronaldo and Messi, right? And it is very hard for another player. I think the fault is from the, uh, you know, voting system how the winners are, are, are in matched. I mean, how the win how the winners are, you know, concluded, how they are chosen. You know, it is a voting system, and of course, any voting system can be rigged. You know, it is it is. It's, it's actually the most controversial I've seen in recent times. Well, I mean, but Lewandowski so did not. This guy. Well, according to the shots, according to the shots, um, Messi, you know, uh, was leading by three points. You know, finally led Lewandowski by three points on certain points. But statistically, on paper, it is not. You know, it is Messi is nowhere uh, near Lewandowski, and I believe Lewandowski should have been marked away. But hey, that did not happen. Yeah, that didn't happen, and it's caused a lot of controversy in the uh, in the football and the world of football. Uh, fans were really disappointed, right? Lewandowski was, was, you know, according to friends worldwide, said Lewandowski was wrong. But I mean, Lewandowski did not go home empty handed. He, he won the Best Strikers Award, uh, a new award, I guess, that was curated well, well, yeah, especially yeah, yeah. for the Polish well, one. Why, why no one was expecting that award. There was no, uh, in, there was no prestige behind such award because one, it wasn't, you know, as, um, as, as, you know, it, it is not going to be a compensation for this, you know, for what has happened to Lewandowski. Lewandowski he was supposed to have won the Ballon d'Or last season, which was denied by the COVID-19 pandemic. But this was a rare opportunity for him to have won. But I, I think something happened, you know, I, I can't even explain. 
But hey, I mean, we've got to move on now. I mean, the award has already gone to the winner, and Lionel Messi is the man with the seventh. Can you beat that? Seven. Uh, volunteer award for the man. So hey, it's King Leo on the beat. It's uh, Lionel Messi is is the man in charge right now. The the Paris Saint Germain forward. So now let's now move it on to the action. In the Premier League, we had action last night. Uh, in the league, we had Newcastle welcoming Norwich City to the St James's Park. One one, it ended. And let's talk about that game now, shall we? Because uh, as Newcastle, we know, are not in the best place right now. They are sitting pretty comfortably at the bottom of the Premier League table. And they've got... Yeah. It's wild. We've played 13 games so far. Uh, for Newcastle, they've played 14. And they are winless. All right? They are winless in 14. They've drawn seven. They've won seven. It seems as though... Uh, Eddie Howe, what's going on with Newcastle? And let's not talk about the fact that they, they went down to 10 men as early as of the ninth minute from a seemingly, should I say, funny challenge? Should I say, I don't even understand that challenge. You knew you were the last man. I'm talking about Clark, uh, Clarin Clark. You knew you were the last man, and you did that kind of foul. Ow! Well, maybe it wasn't, uh, you know, uh, he, he lost awareness. Like, it wasn't, uh, I mean, it, it, it wasn't even, um, he couldn't imagine he did that. You know, it was in the nine minutes, and how, how were you able to get a red card at the nine minutes? You didn't even allow the game to fall deep before you know, it caused some kind of it affected the uh, team towards the uh, you know third half of the game. Towards the final third of the game, sorry. But hey, eventually they had to settle for a point because uh, uh, Newcastle were the ones who went ahead in that game courtesy of the Callum Wilson's penalty. Yeah. Uh, and then, yeah. you look at 18 minutes after that, they had to settle for a draw. Coming courtesy, the goal yeah, coming which, courtesy which for Norway. Which, which is why I said it's, um, his dismissal affected his team, you know, towards the final four, right? Um, it is going to be difficult to, to hold on to that lead because... Um, no wish is also desperately need, um, needing a point at least um, to, to take him from that game. They're also rocking the bottom of the table as well. Yeah, exactly. Both teams had something to fight for. But eventually, uh, for Norwich and for Eddie Howe's men, they both had to settle for a point apiece. Uh, I think Newcastle, they live to fight another day. And they've got to start picking up points from now if they have any hope at all of staying at the top. Uh, I mean, the top really in the Premier League, or perhaps they're going to be returning uh, to the Championship. We never they, know. Not, they, 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 they've not, they've not won. I, I don't. Newcastle has not won a game since the last since since, since the last twelve games now. They've not won a, a game this season. They, 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 they've not Newcastle are yet to win a this game season. this season. Yes, yeah, seven draws, seven Sorry, losses. Yeah, seven draws, seven losses is what they yeah, have. So they've got to change the story true. really quickly. All right. Okay. Okay. Um, and last um, last night we also got actions action from Leeds and um, sorry um, from Brentford. No, we so had Leeds Leeds United and Crystal Palace. And Crystal Palace. Yes. Uh, I mean, I was just going to talk about that game now, shall we? Uh, Leeds United eventually yeah. triumphed. At, I mean, towards the latter stages of that game, that game was quite fiercely contested. I'm talking about Marcelo Bielsa's men taking up Patrick Vieira. Yeah. Let's talk about Crystal Palace now, shall we? They, their last, uh, the last game, uh, they, they did try, they did, but hey, it, didn't, it, it just did not work for them. Let's not talk about Marcelo Bielsa's men, the shall we? Game, the last game I am against Aston Villa, right? Yes, the, yes, against please. Jarrah, Aston Villa. Exactly. Yeah. But now let's talk about the fact that uh, Crystal Palace is just not going the way they want to go right now. Uh, they are winless in three games. Uh, they drew. Uh, the three games and now they uh, that was to Burnley 3-3 three, three, that one happened yeah. they lost to uh, Villa and now they lost to Leeds United yesterday what is going on with Patrick Vieira's men well I think um, well uh, I, I don't think uh, um, Crystal Palace have you know they've, they've faced some difficult teams looking at the um, previous matches they've, apart from Aston Villa where they lost you know, before they before they met Aston Villa, they've actually been picking from although most of those you know um, results were draws, which some of which they could have won. They could have won. Looking at uh, they played Arsenal, they played Leicester City, they played Liverpool. Liverpool, you know, when they when they played Liverpool, 
they lost 3-0 to Liverpool. Since they lost to Liverpool, they've not lost a single game, you know, although it was flagged with, with, with a lot of draws until they met Aston Villa um, after following Steven Gerrard's arrival. You know, Gerrard was, was, was so desperate to make an impression and, you know, was, was, was very determined to hit the ground running, which, you know, explains the result against Aston Villa. But, you know, yesterday's result, you know, is another thing to talk about. They had right, so um, looking at their, looking at their previous matches, I don't think um, I think well they are not as bad as they seem um, considering that they've been they've had some difficult uh, you know, games along the way. Yes, they, they they can still bounce back. Crystal Palace can still bounce back. So uh, they, there is no need to pile a lot of pressure on, on Patrick Vieira right now. We, we still need to give him some chance. <laughs> All right, then, Patrick Vieira still needs a bit of time with that side. Let's not give credit, I mean, to Leeds United. Marcelo Bielsa's men eventually, eventually found a breakthrough as of the 94th minute. I mean, towards the latter stages of the game, really from the penalty spot. For Patrick Vieira's men, they had to feel really disappointed because even though they would have wanted to win, a draw would not have also been a bad result, but that did not happen. That did not go their way. They had to settle for no points after all. Leeds United had to be the victor. Uh, the, the goal coming courtesy Rafinha as of the uh, 94th minute, like I said. Yeah. So big ups to Marcelo Bielsa's men. Okay. Let's now. Uh, well, the goal actually came as a result of a foul, which I think was because of the pressure uh, mounted by uh, Marcelo Bielsa's men towards the final goal of the game, uh, which was actually something to, you know, to take out of the game. They would be um, appreciative. Leeds United have got to be excited about that one. 15 points they've got from 14 games played. They're also not in the best of places. And as of the bottom part of the, yeah. the league table, I think quite a lot of changes and shuffling just might be happening. If Burnley get a win in the next game, a lot of things just might change. Uh, if Norwich City get a win, Watford, a lot of things surely might, just might change in the bottom half of the table. Let's now move on to yeah, other action. Southampton, I, um, I, I, okay, Burnley is having a game today, so if they should win, they will be, um, you know, they will be right above the relegation, relegation zone. Yeah, that one. But we're still in the Premier League now, right? And uh, let's talk about the games we're expecting tonight. Let's talk, uh, talk about the games uh, we're expecting tonight. We're expecting Southampton taking on Leicester City, 8.30 Nigerian time as the kickoff. The Saints are not... Uh, I mean, coming off of a 4 0 thrashing from Liverpool, they're taking on uh, Brendan Rodgers' side. And uh, Leicester City, four goals to two, they beat Watford their last, their last game out. Who do you see taking this particular game based on current form? Well, I, 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 I'm, seeing, I'm seeing a big draw in the game because um, Southampton is not. It's, uh, yeah, I, I, I can't see Southampton, uh, Southampton losing this game again. I, the, 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 the worst results they can get from this. And Leicester City has not been in. in, in well, they've, they've been. They've been, uh, they've been trying their best recently, but right. Um, in my own opinion, I think Southampton will be able to grind out a draw in the results. But Taler. Hello, hello, can you hear me? All right, I can hear you now. Your audio sounded a bit muffled there. So you're giving it basically to both sides settling for a draw. Southampton getting a draw yeah, against yeah, Leicester I'm, City. I'm, I'm, giving, I'm giving Leicester a win or, or a draw, but you know, a draw is more, you know, it's, it's more likely. It's possible into this question, uh, against both Okay, let's see if the Saints will be able to get uh, pick up a point really uh, against the Foxes. Let's now move on to other action. In the Premier League tonight, we're talking about the game Wolves taking on Burnley. For Wolves, they seem to be turning the story. They seem to have been uh, steadying the ship after the exit of their former manager, uh, uh, Nuno Espirito Santo. They seem to be getting the groove back. They've not been playing fantastic. Uh, the last game out, they drew to Norwich City. But before that one, uh, they won against West Ham. Not many people saw them winning against, that, uh, against the Amers, considering the form the Amers were. But now, who is taking it yeah. for you? Wolves taking on Burnley. Burnley can be quite cagey, difficult to play. Wolves as well, they're not the, the most uh, attack-minded side, so to speak. So who do you think is taking this one? Well, I, I give it to um, Wolves. Um, I'm, I'm backing on Wolves to have another win um, in, in this picture today, later today. 
So um, Burnley is well. Burnley is going to play uh, their normal, you know, attacking football. Burnley, Burnley has played um, some attacking. Um, they've shown some attacking display this season, despite not getting as much points as one. Well. But you know, uh, I expect this game. Though you know, uh, it's not a big game like we would say, but it is going to be be an entertaining one. You know, uh, considering what is what is at stake among the two teams. All right, there. Let's see who's going to be taking that one. Wolves taking on Burnley. Let's now move on to the league leaders, Chelsea. They will be going away to the Onnit. So Watford will be welcoming Chelsea to the Vicarage Road. And considering the fact that Chelsea, the last time out against Manchester United, surprisingly uh, had to settle for a draw, uh, who do you think is going to be taking this one? Watford, uh, okay, they've gotten some surprise results here and there. But uh, do you think there are going to be any match at all for Thomas Tuchel's men? Yeah, I think I think um, this is this is going to be an easy win for Chelsea. What well, for is not much. Um, talking about every department, you know, but this is football. Anything can happen. The, the, the you know the least expected can happen. But right now, Chelsea are clear favourites to win this game. Um, Watford has got nothing on Chelsea, you know, in all departments. Okay. You know, Chelsea has been outstanding. Uh, and Mendy has been the joint um, um, clean sheet record holder this season with Alisson of Liverpool, right? So, so um, looking at the defense of Chelsea, I believe it's going to be very difficult for Watford to penetrate and get a goal in that special sure. but, but let's see what happens. I believe this is going to be 2-0 in favor of Chelsea. Two goals to nil. You see Chelsea taking this particular one over the Onnets. I mean, time will tell. 8.30. Is the kickoff? That's the time. Let's now move on to the action that's going to be happening at the Mersey side. Uh, Everton welcoming Liverpool. Uh, that particular one, uh, it's, it has to be interesting to say the very least. Rafa, uh, yes. Rafa Benita has now taken on his former side. I mean, did you actually ever see Rafa being the manager for Everton? Well, um, well, uh, well, it is actually better for him because. He is playing from Goodison Park in this picture. It could have been worse. You know, um, the, the legendary Liverpool fans is going to get him so emotional. Uh, it, could, it, could, it could go both ways. They could go him and they could. But I, I'm, I'm very sure it's almost certain they, they're going to go him. And um, I mean, we, we we would have to see what is going to happen tonight with respect to that. But everything are so lucky, you know, uh, to to uh, to be at home this season and this in this picture because we wouldn't be having so many away friends uh, talking about Liverpool supporters at the Goodison Park. You know, we'll be having more of everything, and that's that can you know that can um, change the course of the game. Right. So, um, in this picture, I expect it to be a crunching one as usual, but not. You know, with the influence of Benitez, I don't know what is going to happen. This is going to be the first time this has ever happened. You know, a former Liverpool manager uh, being the manager for Everton, managing, yes. Managing, managing a rival. Right? To be honest with you, this is the very first time as you know I'm going to be witnessing this kind of fixture. Right. So that gives a unique flavor to to, to this fixture today, making it so unpredictable. Are Everton going to come out so aggressive like they usually do? We don't know. Right. We don't know what kind of tactics Benitez is going to. You know, play out. But considering the fact that Everton, uh, Chaiko, let me stop you there. Let's talk about the fact that Everton have not been the Everton we used to know. Everton have yes, been yes. struggling. They've been stumbling this season. So that, is, this, is this going to be the same kind of Merseyside derby we should expect? Well, you know, Everton, even when they have nothing to, when they have nothing to gain, they, um, they always come out this kind of, you know, they always, uh, this kind of marauding, um, display when they when they face Liverpool always too physical just like the old um, classical where you know it's always a battle between Ramos and you know so they always coming out physical when they see Liverpool and today's match you might you should expect you shouldn't expect the regular everything you have seen this season you know it's going to be very very tough big Ford is going to give us a lot of problems especially you know, it was the one who sent Van Dijk. I, I don't even think Van Dijk wants to name it. <laughs> right, so, so um, well, that's just going to make this match much interesting because we don't even know what to, uh, to, what to expect, expect, basically. To get those. 
Yeah, yeah. So I'm looking at Liverpool's form. They get, they've, they've always get, they've always got at least two goals in every of their last, um, you know, since this season started. Yes. Right. They've always get two goals in in one match. That is the that is the smallest they score each time. So I I expect Liverpool to score two goals against this um, Everton. This Everton. I expect Liverpool to score two goals today again. You know, to continue that streak of of um, a minimum of two goals each match. You know, against Everton, but I don't know if Everton is going to be more disciplined in front of goal. So I cannot guarantee Everton is going to get a goal at all. So I'm giving Liverpool in this position. I'm giving Liverpool two o three o. I mean, it's not going to be a both team score. You know, considering well, what I've seen so far, what I've observed. From Everton. All right, then. Uh, we'll be sure to see what's going to be happening at the Merseyside Derby. Rafael Benitez taking on his former side, Liverpool. Uh, I mean, Jogging Club is the man in charge of that particular one. I mean, Liverpool uh, they seem to be eye-flying, but hey, regardless of their two goals, three goals, they're not at the top of the league now, are they? Chelsea are the ones sitting comfortably uh, in that particular position. Let's now move on to Aston Villa, uh, where Steven Steven G, another Liverpool legend, uh, taking on Manchester City. And Aston Villa picked up two points, beg your pardon, six points in the last two games. They seem to be turning the story around, but will they be able to undo the kind of hit Manchester City will be bringing to the Villa Park? Yeah, so, well, uh, Manchester City's style of play has always been highly, highly intense, right? They don't give the opposition any chance to even play with the ball. You know, when you get the ball, they snatch it back immediately. So uh, I don't know how Aston Villa is going to match with that. Um, going by Steven Gerrard's record, he's kept his clean slate since his arrival at um, Aston Villa. This is going to be his, his, his biggest, um, you know, challenge yes. since arriving as the boss. Yes, since arriving his position as a manager, you know, at Aston Villa. So um, Liverpool fans would want to ask for some favor, you know, to, to at least keep, uh, you know, to take away some points off Manchester City. So we'll see what is going to be. So, so it has to do tonight's fixtures is, is, is you know is, is, is the most interesting since since this Premier League started this season. We a lot of things um, you know going on wrong. You know, Rafa Benitez at Everton, then uh, this is happening. Steven Gerrard facing Manchester City, which is right above Liverpool on the world. Right, so, so let's uh, see if Villa will be doing so Manchester City. We'll, we'll, we'll so are we expecting? Uh, Villa and uh, Tycoon, are we expecting Aston Villa to do Liverpool a favour by taking points of Manchester City? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or do we think it's a pipe dream? We well, of course, you should expect it's going to be like, I, I, I believe in Steven Gerrard. I, trust me, I'm a Liverpool fan and I know what he's capable of. He's going to want to actually, you know, do Liverpool fans this, this favour, right? He believes, Steven Gerrard is the kind of man that believes in, you know, you know, uh, he believes in building goodwill. He doesn't, you know, he does things that promote his name. When he, when he was at um, Scotland, we all saw the kind of charisma he's put in, um, he's put, you know, he's displayed, and we would want to bring this thing to, to England in the Premier League. So I believe it's going to give Manchester City a very, very big challenge. It's not going to be, it's going to prove to be a tough one to crack in today's fixture against Manchester City. So, okay. Um, well, um, I, I, I expect Manchester City to win, but you know, let's see what happens. Let's um, see what happens really if Aston Villa will be picking up points against Manchester City. Hit me up, let me know. We'd like to know your thoughts, your comments, your reaction on the games we've talked about so far. So on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter, you can always send us your messages. Their CTV Live is the handle. On uh, TikTok and YouTube, it is CTV Live 1. You could also leave me a WhatsApp message on 0901-5601-908. Don't call the number. Just send me your WhatsApp mes uh, messages. 0901 5601 908. Let's now move on to the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium where Tottenham Hotspur will be taking on the high flying Brentford. Brentford, I think they've punched that pole above their weight so far uh, since they've come into the Premier League after such a long time out. Are we expecting that Antonio Conte's men will be able to, to stop this high flying? A special shout out to Ivan Tony. That man seems to be unstoppable. He brought his form of the championship into the Premier League. So do you expect that uh, Tottenham will be able to handle uh, the kind of press, the kind of energy that Brentford goes into their game with? Well, um, looking at the differences between the two teams, um, this season so far, they've not really, they, they, uh, you know, they've both 
been underperforming. But you know, by standards, we we, we should talk about Tottenham. Tottenham, uh, you know, Tottenham as usual can can just throw away to this game. We never can tell because Tottenham is just three points uh, above uh, Brentford. You know, Brentford. And if Brentford should manage to get a win, uh, well, um, the the they could go four places, you know, from their current position, which is something they will be eyeing, right? They could even go above Manchester United if United Manchester drop points, yeah. Loses. Yeah. So, so um, well, I, I can't I can't put my catch on on, on Tottenham because the the well they've not really had that that kind of stellar performance they've always had. You know, talking about players like uh, the caliber of players they, they they have at their disposal. So, what are we expecting from this particular game? A draw, a win for Tottenham Hotspur, perhaps, or Brentford maybe just might be taking it. Yeah, Brentford. We should expect we should expect uh, Brentford to be able to you know bring it so, um, to, to spring up the surprise result at you know at Tottenham. Right. So I'm not I'm not going to be putting my money on Tottenham. Is, is it is it draw or, or lose for for, for Tottenham? So we think this game. I'm not, I'm not banking on what's happening in this game. Yes. Okay, so it's the game is basically in the grasp of Tottenham Hotspur. They've, they've, they've considered 17 goals this season. The defense is just as good as Brentford. Right, so I, I, the difference between both teams is not that uh, you know, I know that uh, it's not so much. Much this season to be able to hear. Okay, so then I'm, let's I'm, see. I'm giving a draw or, or win to Brentford. Okay, then let's see if Antonio Conte's men just might be shocking us. Uh, let's see what they're going to be doing in that particular one. Let's now move on to the big game of the midweek. Uh, Manchester United welcoming Arsenal to the Old Trafford. Uh, Manchester United surprisingly picked up a point off of Chelsea in the last time out. Are we expecting, um, because of the kind of form uh, both teams are on, Arsenal seems to be on a slightly higher pedestal right, right now right now as we speak yes. but this kind of games we're talking about rivalry we're talking about energy it is not a derby but the kind of rivalry between these two sides it is legendary what kind of ginger are we expecting manchester united to pull forward yeah i expect it, I expect it to be an heated game you know as you would expect uh, between two big teams you know um, having something to fight um on right so uh I'm giving this game. I'm giving this game to to, to Arsenal. I'm giving this game to Arsenal. They, they've been spectacular. This is a Manchester United, you know, say for when uh, you know Carrick took the role of the of the manager following uh Oligono uh, exit. Right. So so this game I'm giving it to Arsenal. I I, I just hope their big guys um, step up uh, talking about uh Obama Young and uh, um, Lacazette. Right. I don't know if it's, it's like, is Lacazette going to be available for this game? It's just my, it might not be featuring. It might not be featuring for this particular one. But hey, uh, Martinelli seems to be in some goal scoring form that Aubameyang is not on. Uh, Bukayo Saka as well in amazing form. Emily Smith Rowe as well. Uh, the, the young stars in Arsenal seems to be the one doing the job right now. Yeah. So I, I, I don't know why I don't know why the coach doesn't like like um. Um, Niles, um, Maitland Niles, right? So, uh, well, I just hope Tomiyasu and, and, and the other guys are able to keep um, C. Ronaldo at bay because I believe C. Ronaldo is going to start this match against us. Okay, uh, Arsenal would like to win a back-to-back -back game at the Old Trafford for the first time since February 1979. We'll be seeing if that particular record will be happening. And uh, so in this game, I'm giving Arsenal to one. Yeah. Arsenal taking this one, two goals to one. Okay, let's talk about the fact that uh, the display we saw from Manchester United at the Stamford Bridge over the weekend. Uh, that first 45 minutes, uh, I never expected it. I just did not understand what was going on. I did not know what Manchester United were doing. Uh, but for United, that had to feel like a win. They, they are coming with... No, not many people. Okay, now let me ask you, Tycoon. Did you expect the Manchester United were going to pick up a point off of Chelsea? Well, you know, there's always this kind of atmosphere that come around um, the start of games like this. Manchester United have been 
you know, they've been horrible all season. And this is a big game to prove a point, especially for following the appointment of, you know, um, Michael Carrick. Right? So you don't expect that kind of game to go as usual, you know, to just pass as they, they're going to fight, you know, their blood and so it's, I mean, they're going to fight with their last drop of blood, which is, was exactly what we saw. Manchester United almost got a win, if not because of, you know, the mistake by a side. Uh, you know, well, I was expecting this kind of results, to be honest with you. I was expecting, I wasn't expecting Chelsea to trash Manchester United just like that. Okay, then. Uh, so you're saying Arsenal taking this one, two goes to one. Okay, let's now move on off of uh, the action in the Premier League. Let's move on to the La Liga, where Real Madrid will be in action tonight. Uh, we're talking about game week nine, actually. Uh, um, uh, Real Madrid's game in hand is what they're going to be playing tonight, taking on Athletic Club. Right now, Don Carlo and Salotti's side seem to be unbeatable. They seem to be on fire. Are we expecting that Athletic Club just might be causing them problems or uh, Vinicius Jr.'s form and uh, Karim Benzema's form will be carrying Real Madrid tonight? Well, uh, I expect um, Bilbao um, to, 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 to give um, athlete, um, uh, Real Madrid a run for their money. But uh, I, I don't see Bilbao winning this game at all. Real Madrid has been in very, very good form, winning their, all their last four games. You know, their last five games, they've, they've just had a draw and four wins in a row. And they are at home this season. Uh, sorry, this is in this particular this fixture. So making them. Yeah, making them clear favorites to win this game. If anything should, you know, should come by as a surprise, it, it's just meant to be back against our, you know, equal to I expect Real Madrid to win this game. We're expecting Real Madrid to win this one. So by what score line, perhaps, is it going to be a thrashing or is it going to be a bit tight? It's not, it's not. It's not like it's going to be down. It's not going. It's not going to be trash. Look at the last five games. Athletic and Bilbao, uh, the Athletic Club has played. They've, they've, they've drawn four of those five games. They've drawn four of those five games. So, which is why I I am of the opinion that they're going to cause some trouble at the you know at the, at the uh, back. Yeah, and Benavu. So, so well, I, I I expect Real Madrid to ultimately win the first one. You know. You know, considering the fact that they are home in front of their fans and that's going to just give them some kind of motivation, right? Athletic Bilbao has been a hard team to score against, right? Considering, uh, considering just 10 goals in the so last far. Season, um, matches, right? So, which is going to prove. So, I don't see this game having more than 30 goals at the max, right? I expect Cambridge Madrid, however, to, 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 to steal a 2 0 win in the encounter. Okay, let's see if uh, Alan Madrid is going to be the sound we're going to be hearing after this particular game at the Bernabeu where Real Madrid will be welcoming Athletic Club to uh, their home at the Santiago Bernabeu. Let's now move on from action and uh, from the action in the La Liga. Let's go on to the Serie A uh, where Juventus were in action last night and they're back to winning ways. Uh, they lost over the weekend to Atalanta, but hey, they did beat uh, Salateni, um, beg your pardon, Salanita. Salanitana, what am I saying? Uh, two goals to nil. Uh, yes, beg your pardon. Uh, Paolo Dybala returned to the side, and uh, Massimiliano Allegri's men eventually did win this particular one. It could have been three goals to nil, actually, uh, but uh, there was a slip somewhere. Uh, Paolo Dybala missing that particular penalty for Juventus. But, yeah, but no worries, so to speak. They eventually won, even though they're still in seventh position. Okay, um, yeah, well, uh, if Juventus didn't beat uh, Salatin, Salanitana, then who else do um, <laughs> want to beat, right? So, so you know, they've been in horrendous form the whole season, right? They're trying to fight their way back to the top, right? This is not the Juventus that we know, right? Um, you know, at this stage of the season, still fighting at, at the middle of the table, right? Um, so, well, he wasn't. He didn't come by any means. So, so I don't think we should praise them for winning two against um, Salem. They, they are they are rock bottom of the table. Okay, but hey. And talking about standards. Talking about standards. I don't. I, I mean, we should expect more from a team like them. So they are the most expensive team in Australia. Absolutely. I mean, the old ladies are very pricey. They are very expensive there. All right, then, but Juventus did win, so let's, let's give them their flowers. Let's give them their flowers. Well, of course, uh, of course. Normally, we saw them losing to Atalanta. I did not see them. I expected the game to be a big KG, but hey, they lost. 
So now let's move I on. Know, of... I don't know what's going. I, I don't know what 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 happened to Atlanta. Was was there a boost? Because Atlanta seems to be one of the most um, recent, you know, um, strongholds now in the Syria. Uh, you know, talking about their their um, the recent their fall. performance and yeah, yeah, recent form, especially you know how they've been able to qualify for the Champions League um, consecutively. Is that correct? Yes, yes, absolutely. And uh, I think there's uh, there's a lot. I don't know what magic Jasperini is doing with that side, but it seems to be working. Yeah, so so I think it, it is it is worth looking into. Like um, you know, researchers need to know what is what is going on at Atlanta. That they are yeah, but uh, if we're going to look at it though, I think uh, if you can, what wins you games is your goal scoring prowess, right? Uh, but uh, what wins you titles, I guess, is your defense. What is keeping Atlanta where they are right now, I think, is the fact that they have amazing goal scorers. Uh, if you're talking about uh, Zapata and the likes, basically, they come in with so much, so much, uh, yeah. uh, Zipa, Salit, all of these guys, really, they, they come in with... Experience. They, they exactly. Are, uh, so <laughs> they play really good football. They play really good football. Defensive, uh, I think, defensively is where their problems, where their woes lie. They just yes, can't yes, hold on to leads, and I think that's their problem. But goal scoring wise, they've yeah. got it in the bag. Okay, now we already brought me to Atlanta, so let's talk about Atlanta, shall we? Atlanta were also in action last night. They did beat uh, Venezia four goals to nil. Uh, Pasolet, Mario Pasolet. The Atric Hero scoring yeah. three goals for Jasperini's men and uh, Tune Kupminas as well, getting himself on the score sheet. So, four goals to nil for Atalanta. I think it's good business for a team that knows how to score as much as they do. Yeah. So, uh, well, you would expect them to score more than four goals, especially considering the fact that the last goal came at the 67 minutes. Right, so you should you should expect the goal scoring spree to go on, even if they didn't score at all. You know, you don't expect the match to just you know get buried like, like that and, and become silent afterwards. Right, so so well they've done well and that is affordable. Right, and uh, well I I am also seeing Atlanta qualifying for the next season's Champions League if they keep on with this with this kind of form. If they're able to also fix their defensive. Uh, you know issues, right? They, they might not see themselves as having def defensive issues. You know, considering you know um, the low expectations around the club. You know, you should agree with me that um, they are currently exceeding the expectations of their fans, right? Yeah, yeah, I guess so. I guess so. I don't so, think uh, so, so, the fans are expecting them to uh, win the Serie A. Yeah, their fans are not complaining at all with the performance. But if they put look into their defensive issues, then it is it is going to be a big plus for the team. Okay, but wait, let me ask you, Tycoon. When you are beating somebody four goals to nil, what more do you want? Like, do you want to kill them? Like, what do? You, uh, uh, now. Well, I'm just trying. To, I'm just trying. To, I'm just trying to be. Um, you know, I, I'm just trying to. You know, um, you know, look into the future. I'm trying to probe into the future. <laughs> the uh, on the on the fourth position, which means yeah, yeah. we miss out on the, on this season's champions, despite having a wonderful season. Why? Because they pay to look into their defense, right? So it's going to be painful, you know, you know, um, missing out by one point at the end of the season. You know, ah, uh, but yeah, I, I, I do, I do get you. I was just kidding. Uh, there, let's see if I, I mean we've just played uh, 14 games for okay, 15 games uh, for some sides, 14 for some. But it's just basically like uh, one third of the way into the Serie A season. I think a lot can still change. Let's move on now to Napoli, where they're going to be taking on Sassuolo. Sassuolo reigned on uh, AC Milan's party over the weekend. Are we expecting them to also? spoil the party for Spalletti's men or uh, uh, we don't see Napoli. Do you see Napoli dropping points in this particular one? Against 12th um, placed Sassuolo. Sassuolo oh, reigned uh, on AC Milan's party, so they can do the same thing to Napoli. I don't know what's, I don't know what's wrong with AC Milan. They, they, they seem to not, like, you know, when, when you expect them to, to have a, an easy game, they, they seem to fumble. Just like uh, what is currently happen happening at, at Liverpool, excuse me for saying that. But right, so um, looking at Napoli, I think Napoli is a more disciplined um, team. Just having considered just seven goals, having considered just seven goals out of the last um, 14 games, right? So 
Well, uh, I don't see um, Sassuolo, you know, taking a point away from, from Napoli. Okay, uh, so it's a question of how many goals Napoli can score. Well, I, I expect I, uh, um, I expect um, Napoli. I don't. I expect Napoli to, to shoot to, to you know. Um, I expect a two goal difference. It should be three one. I'm giving Sassuolo um, a goal because they are they are born in, in front of their fans. So I expect Napoli should um, to, to to get a three one. You know, in that game. Okay, let's see what Napoli uh, will be doing. I mean, our own, our very own Victor Sime is not going to be in action. He's still going to be out, I think, up until next year. And we Enjoy. wish him safe recovery. I mean, fast and speedy recovery. We cannot wait for him to return. Let's now move on to other action. We're still in the Serie A, of course. We're in Inter Milan, and I think so far so good. Uh, Maybe not where we expect them to be, I guess. I mean, considering the fact that they are the current holders of the Serie A title, they're going to be taking on Spets uh, there at the San Siro. Who do we see uh, Inter Milan taking this one, beating Spets there, like, like as if they stole, they stole something in the market, or uh, Spets there just might be shocking Inter? I expect Inter Milan to beat Spets there as if they stole icon in the market, right? So... Um, <laughs> But I expect them to beat them. I expect I expect a lot of goals in the game. Um, I'm looking at the three. Oh, I'm, I'm looking at the three new, three new. Uh, you know, uh, I'm looking at three oh in the game. Okay, okay. let's see oh, if uh, 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 Inzaghi's men, if Simon Inzaghi's men, will be giving you what you're asking for. If we're going to be getting the goals we want. Okay, let's now move on to. Uh, let, we have to talk about the special one. I mean, for, since we are in it, uh, Italy, we have to talk about the special one. Bologna will be taking on Roma. AS Roma seem to be quite okay form. Okay, sitting pretty at number five. Tammy Abraham seems to be in amazing goal scoring form. What are we expecting from Roma? What are we expecting from Bologna? Well, uh, um, Joe, um, Jose Mourinho has. As, uh, well, since taking over Roma, has had some. Well, I would say this is not uh, a typical Mourinho that we used to know, but well, he is still, he's, 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 you know, he's trying at least, um, sitting currently on the field and playing uh, Bologna, right? So I, I, I don't. Looking at this game, this game is is is, is having draw written all over it. I'm seeing I'm seeing a one one in this picture. I'm seeing one one. You know, Bologna is at home and Roma is playing the win. Right then, looking at the standings, um, looking at the standing, Roma has not really, you know, Roma does not have an excellent uh, away form. You know, they are currently on the outdoor. They are currently the eighth team on the table. Right, so we shouldn't expect much into this picture from Roma. Right, it's not going to pass like that normal, uh, you know, game. Okay, uh, so you're not expecting so much from Roma. 1-1 one, one is what yes. Tycoon is saying. That, uh, the special one will be giving us. No, Wahala. Let's now move on to the team of the man that has the seven uh, Ballon d'Or. I'm talking about uh, Paris Saint-Germain. PSG is their name. They're going to be taking on Nice. And, but I don't think Lionel Messi will be featuring for them, though. Uh, he's currently out with an illness. So we wish him speedy recovery. But, I mean, it seems as though it's a question of when uh, PSG will be lifting the title. It seems as though this particular title is their own. It's calling their name. I mean, how do you forty? I mean, how are you twelve points ahead of your closest rivals, Azazal? So, but wait, are you expecting this? I mean, Nice currently sits in third place right now with twenty six points, and Paris has a with forty points from fifteen games played. Uh, are you expecting this to shock uh, Pochettino's men, or is Paris Saint Germain all the way? Well. Uh uh, well, uh, okay. Uh, PSG is, is um, I don't, I don't expect um, needs to be able to have, you know, to be able to beat PSG in this game. At all. Uh, right. So even, I, even when, even if PSG is playing, you know, it's not there at the highest, highest level, right? Uh, I still do not see this taking a point away from, uh, from, from Paris. Right now, um, the absence of Messi is not should, should, should that be considered a loss, considering uh, what he has contributed in, in his last game, he had three assists. Mm -hmm. But since his joint phase, he's only managed a single goal in the league one. Is that correct? Yes. 
So I don't think uh, Messi's absence is going to have any negative impact. Uh, you know, it's not. It's, it's going to have. A, um, it's, it's not going to have much impact on the Paris Saint Germain. They start for them, and they are far ahead of the. You know, but I, but I couldn't. You know, they're going to be without Neymar. Uh, Paris Saint Germain are going to be without Neymar. They're going to be without Messi as well. I think that's it's a loss, but really. They are, but they have Mbappe. Yes. And they have, uh, they have Idrissa Gwai. They've got Di Maria as well and uh, Verratti and the other guys, yeah. Yeah, so um, they have Akimi too as well. Right, so um, that's enough to, to roast this now. Okay, well, let's see if uh, this will be made into some... Some interesting roast yeah, there, yeah. like you said. Okay, let's see. I mean, I think it's going to be shocking, though, if Paris Saint-Germain do drop points uh, against Nice. But, hey, it's football. It's football, though. Anything. Yeah, absolutely. So, I'm, I'm ready for the surprises. I'm ready for the shocks. Just keep it coming. Uh, now let's. I mean, I mean, I think we've done quite. We've done justice really to the to the big boys who are going to be in action, uh, from the Premier League to the La Liga, uh, to the Serie A, uh, and now to the Ligue 1. So let's take a couple of fans' reaction now. So we uh, have got uh, Ayamide from Ojodu Bega saying that uh, I think it was a daylight robbery. Uh, I think it should have been Lewandowski winning the Ballon d'Or. Uh, I mean, 2020. Uh, he was robbed, cut to the fact that the, the, the award did not hold. And now, uh, but big ups to Messi Dosha, at least. He did something for uh, Argentina. Let's take another reaction. I have uh, Shewin from Aja. Shewin saying that, uh, big ups to Messi, can you beat that seven times? Uh, and I was actually surprised that Ronaldo finished out of the top three for the first time since 2010. Okay, I don't think people are shocked so much, but please, please, Messi has collected the title. Well, Can we please move well, on? Well, how was Ronaldo able to like um, from from leapfrog um, Salah right on the on the block? Well, if you I ask mean, me yeah. now, who I go ask? I don't know. Well, it's because of the system this um voting has uh, you know has has been used to. I mean, it's because of the system, right? I think the systems will still need to be reviewed as time goes on. We never can tell. But there's a lot of, um, you know, uh, the current uh, way of determining who the winner is can give a lot of room for, you know, manipulation of the final results. Because it is not it is not something to be heard about that only two players have won the last then can I say only only three only two players have won the last apart from uh, Modric, right? In twenty the last World Cup that was played in twenty twenty. Is that correct? World Cup twenty eighteen. Was it twenty eighteen? Oh yeah, twenty eighteen. Apart from Modric, that won the twenty it was it twenty nineteen Ballon d'Or. Right? It's, it, it, that's always been between Ronaldo and Messi. It's, it's really boring. Can they tell us no other players as performed at least? But in um, fairness, in fairness, really, I think it, it absolutely has been. It's been Messi and Ronaldo. They've just been passing the baton uh, from thrashing in. It is because of Messi and Ronaldo that when a player scores about 34, 35 goals in a season across different competitions, we claim it's not such a big deal. It's because of these guys. When people average 50-plus yeah. goals per season, like on a regular, they've raised the bar so high. Uh, it makes it difficult for other players to keep up, really. I think that's what it is. Let me take uh, two more reactions from our fans. Uh, I have uh, Ayla B, I Tycoon. Uh, my name is Tayo from Egbeda. Mendy was clearly robbed. Donnarumma winning the Yashin Award was a daylight robbery. Okay, I think some Chelsea people right there. I have another reaction says, I Omolabake, I Tycoon. My name is Nonso from Oer. It's funny that the Ballon d'Or keeps making it look like the Ballon d'Or award was made for Messi. <laughs> okay, there. I mean, uh, it's not me. I did not organize the award. So, uh, big ups to the guys who won. Uh, they've won it already. Let's see if uh, we're going to be having new winners uh, in the consecutive uh, award ceremony. We still have the FIFA best, though. So, let's see if we're going to be having changes in that one or uh, it's still going to be status quo remains the same. Thank you so much, Tycoon for doing this with me. I hope you had as much fun as I did on the show. 
Yeah, of course. I, I do. I really enjoyed it. It was so nice to be, you know, on the show on today's episode. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you so much for coming through. I mean, it's football, right? We never get tired. Especially me, right now, I'm in football, everyone. So you have to have Premier League games, Serie A games, La Liga games. Over the week, like last weekend, and now we're talking about games as well, midweek action. So it's football, everyone. That's what I have. And Saturday, Sunday, we still have actions as well. Beautiful. Champions League uh, action again next week. I, I, I live for this particular one. Uh, that's, that's how I love it. You know, just keep it coming. And I hope you guys will continue to enjoy this beautiful round leather game of football. Life is way too short not to experience football, like I always say. But make sure you stay safe while you are at it. I mean, what's life without football? I don't want to imagine it. Stay safe. All right? It's very important. Get, get vaccinated. Go and get your vaccine. Ensure that you wash your hands. Properly, all right, with soap and water for at least 30 seconds. If you cannot get that, ensure that you use uh, your hand sanitizers. You can get the small bottles. They can talk in your bags and briefcases, wherever it is you're going to. Ensure that you don't touch your face. Don't shake hands. We can be doing our shaking of hands, maybe from a distance. Do you understand? Do not do physical touching, yeah? Uh -huh, that kind of. Or you talk not to uh, air knuckles, yeah, that one. Air knuckles, air kisses, air everything. But be careful, though, COVID day around. COVID Omicron is the one raining now. Uh, please, just, go, just stay safe. That's all I can tell you. Stay safe, all right? Ensure that you're responsible on the roads as well, okay? Uh, we're in the Ember month. Oh, did I tell you guys? Happy New Month. It is December. Uh, quite a number of people will be traveling. Uh, wherever it is you're going to, be responsible. If you're holding the steering wheel, make sure you're responsible. Passengers as well, wear your seat belt. It's not for fashion. It's not a prop. It's not for decoration. Safety first at all times. Till I come your way again, I remain your own girl. Omola Bakeradi, and I'm saying to keep it locked right here on CTV. Stay safe, stay blessed, and bye for now.